Greetings, 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 everyone. Steve, very cool of kindness. How are you doing today? Hopefully your weaving's been happy. Okay, what I have for you today is I'm going to show you how I make a stitched modified trilobite. Um, some examples. Here's one I've done. It's a indigo, burgundy, and gold stitching. Here's one I've done. This is stealth olive and this is a shockwave pattern with olive and black and olive drab as the stitching. The one we're going to be working on today is this one right here. This is midnight blue and it's a shockwave pattern which is um, baby blue and midnight blue and the stitching on this one is colonial blue. Now, I'll go ahead and tell you this. I show this in the actual video, but I'll show you again. Um, the, this one is a little thicker than it might appear to be because of the way this accent cord is woven in there. So I'll give you a shot of it, a profile shot. Because I know me, I want to see how thick one is so I can calculate, you know, for the sizing purposes. But I'll let you see this. It's, it's thicker than a normal trilobite. Because of the way this accent piece is, is kind of it's kind of got a lump back there on the back. So just be my be mindful. I do mention that though. I do mention that like always. I give specifications and measurements and the add to and all that. But if you want to see how it's done with all the tips and the tricks and the commentary that I'm known for on my channel, stick around because we're we'll gonna get right to it, folks. Okay, folks, I'm back. I'm set up. Got the four core strand and all that ready. Okay. We're, we're going to get right into this. Let me, let me say this first. I say this at the beginning of a lot of my videos. I am not a filmmaker. I don't have the best equipment. So, with that said, I apologize for, you know, not staying in frame, getting out of focus, the lighting being bad, audio, video quality not being the best. I am not a filmmaker. But what I do know how to do is make poor pericle bracelets. And if you watch these videos, which I know they tend to be a lot longer than the ones you see on YouTube, but I'll give you all the tips and tricks and things that I have learned from doing this. And hopefully it'll make it easier for you. You won't struggle like I did um, in doing all this. Okay, now with all that said, we're going to get straight into this. Um, Let's see, I'm going to be using a, five, or a 15 millimeter or a 5 8 inch brushed brass metal safe lock buckle. I get these from Paracord EU. I'll say that again. Let me make sure I'm telling you right. Um, 15 millimeter brush brass metal safe lock buckle. Paracord EU. That's where I get these from. That's where I get most of the buckles I use. The metal ones, anyway. The tactical buckles. A lot of people ask me about those. Okay, but here's here's one. I'll show it to you up close so you can see it. Most of you, yeah, uh, many of you probably seen these. You can get them off of other places, but I found the quality of the ones from Paracord they use just a lot better if you ask me. But that's my personal opinion. Okay, now, well that's it. Let me put this back over here where it goes. Okay, um, today I'm going to be making this for a wrist that is seven and three quarter inches. Okay, oh, let me say this. Full strand cord. If you don't know how to do it or you need instructions, check out, uh, there's a link in the description below to my playlist of how to set up core strands. But full strand core. Single cow hitch at the top, come down, double cow hitch at the bottom, and you come up. And I do these, I don't do it like you see a lot of people do it. I do it slightly different. I, I put these two little side knots here, and that's what locks it in place for me. Okay? So like I said, if you want to know how I do this, go check out the description below, full strand core. Okay. Um, now, with that, let's see. The specs, the specs. Um, <clears throat> the add to for this one, 
I've calculated it out to be an inch and five eighths. If you don't understand what I mean when I say the add to, a wrist in this case is seven and three quarter inches. But we know you cannot take that seven and three quarter inch and measure from connection point to connection point seven and three quarter inches. Why? Because the bracelet will be too small. You have to take into consideration and into account the thickness of the bracelet. The thicker the bracelet, the more the add to measurement is, right? So in the case of this one, in my weaving style, now it might be slight, it might be a little more, a little less for you and your weaving style. And like the type of cord you're using. Right, thickness of the cord. Like if you're using 275, 325, something like that, it might be slightly different. But I'm using 550 today. But the add to for me and my weaving style is an inch and five eighths. So there's your rough starting place. Okay. Um. What's next? Oh, cord. This is midnight blue, as the core strand and the you know majority of the bracelet. And I'm using which is. For those who know me, I'm going to tell you, I would rather have way too much cord and have scrap to cut off in the end than not have enough and get down to the end and realize I don't have enough cord to finish it. Because I will not splice cord together on a bracelet. Make sense? So, I usually overestimate. And as always, I'll say this. Here you go. Listen to this. As always, when I make one of these, I give you the specs here. But the final specs after I've adjusted for how much, you know, I've had to cut off and all that, that's in the description. That's what you need to actually look at is what's in the description. Okay. So back to what I was saying. Uh, 14 feet of midnight blue. Full strand core. Okay. Our accent piece is this is shockwave. I, I'm, I'm really loving this shockwave pattern. We can get this to focus. This is midnight blue and baby blue shockwave, right? And this is a, it's probably going to be way more than I need, but it's four feet and six inches, just in case. Okay, now I'm, I'll say this. I should have said this back when I was talking about the add to measurement. The add to, the reason this one, it, it, you know, Anybody who's done a basic trilobite knows that the add to is not very much. But because the way this accent piece is woven in here around the back, it causes a big ridge down the back side, which adds to the thickness of the bracelet. So I'll show you this. I'll, I, I, I'll let you see the front of it. This is one I've made. I've actually made another one, too. I'll let you see this. Most likely I've showed you this in the introduction. But here's one where I've used the shockwave. If it'll focus, right? This is stealth olive, and the middle it's labeled as olive and black, and I've seen it labeled as moss and black. But the stitching is olive drab, right? And this one right here is indigo night, burgundy, and gold. But I'll let you see the back of it. This red right here, if you look at it from the side, you can see it causes a little hump right there, and it adds to the thickness. That's why the add to on this one is a little bit higher, a little bit more than your average trilobite. You know, when I when I made the first one I made, I, I looked at it, and I was like, hmm, and I didn't quite add enough. I can It fit on my wrist. I always make one as a test for me to, make, to get all the numbers and specs and everything down correctly. And uh, it was a little tight on my wrist, the first one I made. But I can wear it. But I adjusted that ad, too. And I'll tell you this. I like mine to be, I don't like them real tight. But I don't like them so loose that they flop. I want to be able to get my finger, the tip of my finger up under it. Okay? So, you know, I like them a little on the loose side, if you will. Okay, so with all that said, the ad, two inch and five-eighths. I got 14 feet of midnight blue. And over here, the accent piece, which I'll show how to add that in in just a second, is four feet and six inches. Um, I'm going to stitch this, and it's going just like this one right here. And I'm, uh, I'm going to be using two separate pieces of stitching, and each one is going to be four feet, right? And that's probably going to be way more than I need. So like I said, check out the description in the video, and that's where you'll get... 
you know, the better, uh, <coughs> the recal recalibrated measurements or whatever. And then just remember, this is for a seven and three quarter inch wrist. So if your wrist is smaller, you can take off of those measurements. If it's bigger, you're going to have to add too. You know, that's where some quote unquote educated guesses come in. Okay. Well, all that said, we'll get to this. I know I've been talking long enough. Um, Okay, if you're familiar with the basic trilobite, that's all this is. We're just adding this extra piece in here. And it's not that difficult. If you've done a, what's the name of it? A dragon's teeth? This is very similar. This accent piece, the way it's added in here, it's very similar to the same way you would do a dragon's teeth. I think that's the name of it. Um, but it's very similar to that. It's, this is not a hard weave. It's not anything. The only thing about this weave that... um you need to be mindful of is because of this accent piece, you know, if you've done a trilobite, when you push it up toward the buckle and you pull it tight, it tends, it, it'll stay there for the most part, right? You don't have to, you know, some bracelets you weave, they don't want to stay and you constantly, you have like a fishtail. You kind of have to hold it, push, pushed up and kind of, you know, hold it as you go along, okay? Basic trilobites, you don't have to do that. But the, with this one and this accent piece, the way it gets woven in here, it has a tendency to not want to stay tight. So you got to be mindful of that as you're weaving. You, you're constantly having to 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 check back, to look back at what you've done and make it tight as you go. Make sense? And I'll show you how I do this. Okay, so let's see. We're going to start. Basic trill by. Let me zoom in so you can see. Um, basic tool by this all this is is a basic tool by we're just adding this extra piece in. Okay. So basic tool by so we got a four four string core. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start off on this side. <coughs> we're gonna go over one, under two, and over one. Make sense? So we're gonna go over this first string. Go down through the first lane and go under the two middle strands and then over the last strand, right? And you just pull your slack through. We get that. It's going, here, let me pull this down so you can see. It's going over here and then it's going under the middle and it's going over this last one. Right now, this side we're going to do the same thing, but a mirror image, the exact opposite. We went over, under, over. With this one, we're going to go under, over, under. Right. So with this one, we're going to wrap around to the back and go through this top, through this first lane on this side. Right. Then we're going to go over the two middle strands. Okay, now this is the key right here. I'm going to go ahead, I'll pull this through so you can see what I'm talking about. I'll pull that through. Okay. So, we went under right here. Wrap around the back side of the bracelet. We go through that first lane going under the first cord from this side. Okay, now we're going to go over these two middle strands. And this is the key in a trilobite, creating the X right here in the middle, right? You've got the first strand, it's going underneath, and the strand I'm doing now is going over the top. But it's creating this X right here. Make sense? Now, we went under, we went under one, over the two in the middle, and then we're going to go under the last one. Now look at the way this is set up. It creates this this X right here in the middle, right? Okay, now we're gonna we're gonna add in our accent piece. Now, don't pull this up too tight yet because you got to get in here. Okay, now I'm gonna show you. This is what I've done. This is the way I do this. Okay, you take the end of your accent piece, and on this side, in this first line right here. Right where my finger is, you're gonna go. You're gonna stick it down through there. And you don't need much because that eventually is gonna get cut and burned right there. Right, keep that in mind. It's gonna get cut and burned. So when you see me do these first 
two, three weaves, you'll see what I'm going to do. Okay? Now, we got to do that. And all we're going to do is go over these two middle strands, and then we're going to go back down this slot, first slot of this side. Right? I can get it through there. And we'll just pull a slack out. Now I'm going to kind of put this up here so it'll be kind of out of my way. Okay, we see how I did that, right? Leave you a little bit hanging. You don't need much. Like I said, that, that's going to eventually get cut and burn. But you do, you know, leave you about two inches or so, two and a half inches hanging out. Okay, now we're going to push up, give it a loose cinch, loose cinch. Push it up, and then kind of tighten it up. Now, right here, we want this piece in the middle to kind of be tight. And this is the this is the accent piece is the one that kind of gives out creates the issue of it not wanting to stay tight, and not sitting right, and all that. So we're gonna push up. And what we'll do is we're gonna kind of pull it, pull this just a little bit. Now don't pull it so hard that you it pulls it all the way back through. You gotta be mindful of that. Okay, now, what we're going to do here, pay attention. This right here is the tip that I did. In order to go ahead and have this tucked under, you know, because like any, any, anything, all these cords, when you get done, you're going to have to back weave them onto the back side of the bracelet, run them up through one of the knots with a stitching needle or something like that. That way they'll stay there, and then you can cut and burn. You're, you're basically, just like when you do stitching, you start off by running it up under a couple of knots, and you're anchoring it in position, right? Well, you're going to do that with this and all these other ones when you get done. Basically, you're going to anchor your cords. I'm going to go ahead and anchor this thing. Instead of coming back afterwards and trying to run this little short piece through whatever, this is the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to take this piece, I'm going to just kind of lay it right here behind these two core strands. And then, I'm going to take this one, and we're going to wrap it around the back side. And we're going to come up in this first slot. Underneath the X that we've created. Okay? So we're going to pull this through. And notice how I'm going, if you can see this right here. It's going, here, let me pull this out here. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll do this just to show you what I'm talking about, okay? I'm going to create some extra slack in this piece. This piece that we're going to cut and burn, going to wrap the length of our accent cord underneath that. That way when this gets wrapped around again, it's going to anchor that piece into place. Does that make sense? Okay, and I'm going to pull the slack back through because I don't need that much of it. Okay, so we're going to basically just hold it to the back of them two core strands and incorporate it in this wrap that we're about to do. Like I said, we take this, we go up through that first slot on this side. We pull out our slack. Then we go cross over the two middle ones and we're going to go back down through the slot on this side. Pull out your slack. We got that. Now see what we're doing. I'll show you. Excuse me. You see how it's wrapped. It just wraps around this. This is burgundy in the, in the. Excuse me. In the instance of this bracelet, all it's doing is wrapping around those two core strands. Here, I'll do it this. Way. It's wrapping around those two core strands. And getting incorporated into the trilobite wave, right? And what I've done, if you can see this, hopefully, here we go. The handy dandy laser paracord pointer. If you look right here, you can see where this, that little slack piece, two and a half inches long or so, is hanging out, right? You can see it. Well, what I've just done right there on the back side is I went ahead and wrapped it 
That way, it's going to be wrapped under these first two pieces, and then it's going to have to cut and burn. Makes sense? That way, you go ahead and do this part step. That way, at the end, you don't have to try to get that thing up under there. Does that make sense? That's why I'm doing it that way. This little little thing I picked up. I did it the first time, and I was like, wait, you know, I could just go ahead and do that and get that out of the way. Okay, so we got that in there. <coughs> now, what we're going to do, this first part is going to be, it's kind of, it's kind of tricky because you gotta, you want it to get tight. So we're going to push everything toward the buckle. Push up, push up, push up, push up. When I say push up, I mean toward the buckle. Push up. In all my videos, when I say push up, toward the buckle. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece. See, it's kind of hanging down. You got to bring it so that it's underneath. The accent piece is going underneath this main wheel, right? That's why I kind of get it up out of the way so you can see that. Now, we're going to do our X again. Right? <clears throat> now, this piece, don't let it get in the way of the X. You don't want to, you don't want it to get intertwined in the X. So again, we're going to take this blue one. We're going to go over one, under two, and over one. So we're going to go down through the first slot, over there, over right here, under the two right here, and then back through this last slot and go over this last cord. Kind of hold it right there. Go out the slide. Okay, now, this one, we're going to wrap it underneath. That way we go under this first one on this side. It's going underneath. And it's above, notice it's above this one. In, the, in this lane right here, in this in this last lane we're working at, it's going above this one, toward the buckle. This one is above it. That way we'll get that X we want. You see what I'm saying? Now, we're going to go over the two middle ones and down through this slot on this side. And we're going to pull our slot through that way we have created this X again, right? Okay, now, kind of give it a loose cinch. Push everything up. Now, you can see this is all loose right here. Right? We're going to fix all that in just a second. Many of you have seen me do this. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and kind of tighten this up. Now, what I'm going to do here is I want to get this first one tight, but it's wrapped around. You can't just pull it here because it's not going to tighten up this piece. So what I'll do is I'll take my pliers. You've seen me do th things like this before. You take your pliers, or take my pliers. You take your knotter's tool. You can do it and use a knotter's tool. You know, I had a buddy of mine. He said, you need to get you a knotter's tool. I said, yeah, I've got one, but... I find it easier to do with the pliers. But see, so you stick your tool up under there and kind of pull it, and it's going to tighten this piece up right up here a little bit. All right? Once you get going, it'll start getting tight, and it, it won't be so difficult. But we're going to I'll take these pliers and kind of pull this, and it'll tighten up this rat right here. All right? And then... Take this and pull it that direction, and it'll tighten. It'll tighten it up. As I'm doing this, I'm gonna kind of keep a little tension on it. I'm gonna push all this up, tighten this down, tighten this down. And what I'm gonna do to get these these first little sections tight? Because I see that little accent piece throws everything off, and nothing that wants to be tight right here. But I want mine neat, clean, and tight. So I'm gonna take in pliers, like I said, and this first piece right here where it's wrapping around. Just grab a hold of it, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab a hold of it, and I'm gonna pull it this way, and it'll pull, it'll tighten it up just a little bit. All right? Now we're gonna do the other side the same way, but it's coming from underneath. You got to get it from the underneath side. Okay, now, when we got that tight, we're going to 
pull this and it's going to tighten. It's going to, we're basically just taking out all the slack that we've in that bracelet. Now we're going to push it up. And you can always, this is the end piece, you can, you can t tighten it, it'll tighten this side up, right? So we're going to get all that tight. Now, what we're going to do, one more time. We're going to take this, this piece is hanging down. Let's get these out of the way. We're done with these for right this second. We'll just pull them straight down. If I can get it to stay. Okay, now this piece, again, we're going to take this piece and we're going to just lay it right underneath those two middle strands. Right? That way, when we wrap this around, it will wrap around that, that piece again. Okay? Now that accent piece is going to come below this piece, but through this lane on the far side. Right? I'm going to just pull the slack out. Now we're going to cross over those two middle ones. And go down through the lane on this side, right here. Pull out your slide. Okay. Kind of get that out of the way. Like I say, you want the accent to be underneath this piece right here. Right? So get it underneath. And then I just kind of pull it and get it out of the way. That way it's not in the way. We'll kind of push it up again, and we're going to do our we're going to do our X again. Start with this side. We're going to go over one, under two, and over one. So we come across the top, and we go over this first one, over right here on the first one, down through the first lane, under the two middle strands, and then over this last one. I'm going to pull a slack through. Okay, now make sure you get this out of the way. Kind of hold it up out of the way when you do this one. Now take this one, and we're going to wrap it around the back side and go under the first one, coming up through that first lane, going across over the top of the two middles, and then down through the slot over on this side, Below this one. That way we create the X. We always want to create that X when we make a trilobite. Always be mindful of creating the X. Alright? And I know you do it and no problem. When you get down to the end, it's, when you get down to the end, you're in a tight space. Even I make the mistake and don't create the X right and I look at it and I'm like, whoa, that's not right. I had to undo it and fix it. Okay. But we see how we got that now. I'm going to give it a loose cinch. I'm going to push it up. Now, I'll show you this, too, just, just so you know. Let's see, where's a, where's a trilobite? A basic trilobite. I've got one over here I'll show you. If you look on your basic trilobite, all these little wraparounds on the edge, they, they're all pushed right next to each other. There's no gap in them, okay? Well, but the nature of the way this accent piece is in here, you're going to have little gaps in here. You can push those up and get rid of them. But I'll show you. You see what I'm saying? It, once you get it kind of tight, you start pushing everything, push up, push up toward the buckle, it's going to close those gaps in. But you're still going to have those little tiny gaps. It's not going to look tight. When you come back and you do the stitching, it's going to tighten it all up. All right? Okay. Now, we got that done. Like I said, Push it up, pull it tight a little bit. Now, we don't have to worry about this anymore. We don't have to worry about wrapping it anymore. We've got it wrapped. We've got it anchored now under those first two wraps. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece and I'm going to pull it this direction to tighten it up right here and then I'm going to keep the tension on it and kind of wrap it around. Does it, hopefully that makes sense. So I'm going to pull it, and then I'm going to kind of wrap it around, keeping some tension on it, and come up through this last slot. All right? And I'm going to kind of hold my finger on it to keep, that, keep it tight. Now I'm going to go over, 
those two middle strands again and pull it through that first line. All right. Now we got it over here. We'll pull it out again. Now this is where you gotta kind of you can be mindful and kind of hold it a little bit. So all this tightness that you've created, you let go of it. It doesn't all poof, blow back up on you. So you push it up. Now, we're going to kind of do this. We're going to do our X, but we're going to kind of hold this while we're doing it. See what I'm saying? Once you do this and you kind of get used to it, you'll start doing it. It'll become natural for you to kind of hold this, not necessarily with your thumb the way I'm doing it, however, most, whatever's most comfortable for you, but you want to kind of keep the tension on this, not pushed up, keep everything kind of tight, right, as you weave it. So we're going to go over, under, and over. See how I just did that in one little motion. That way then my finger's kind of keeping everything up, right? Now we're going to do this one. We're going to go through it, creating our X over the two middle ones and down through this side. Now, we're going to push everything toward the buckle. Pull in this one. And you'll notice when you pull this one, this little wrapper on this side will tighten up. All right? <coughs> and I'll say this, like on any trillabot, I think people... The thing that they're not aware of, they don't think about, or they struggle with, is the sides of it. All these wraparounds. One will be sticking out, one's not. They boop, 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 boop. It's because the tension consistency. When you pull this one, look at it. And it pulls this one, this wraparound tight. Make sure it, you know, they're all in line on the side. Now, I'm going to switch hands. And I'm going to pull this one. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to look at it. When I pull here, it's going to tighten up this wrap around on this side. I'm going to look at it and see that it's, you know, falling in line. So it's all even. Now, granted, the top of the bracelet, we all know that the top of that bracelet is going to be narrow. And as you do four, five, six repetitions, it's going to widen out just a little bit. Right? So, you know. Just be mindful of that. But once you get into the meat of the bracelet, it'll be straight down. And every time you pull one, pull the side, and you look at that wraparound, make sure that wraparound's matching the one you did just before. Does that make sense? Now nobody's perfect. Even mine don't look perfect like I would want them to. Okay. Now we see how I got that, right? Now you can't quite see it on camera very well. You kind of can, but not not really. This. Accent piece right here, it's bulging out because it needs to be tightened up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it. Remember, we don't need to wrap this in that anymore. So just let it dangle. We're gonna take this one. Now I'm gonna pull this way, and you notice. Right? Maintaining that tension, wrap it around the back. So I'm holding it with my finger on the back side to maintain that tension. Now I'm going to come back up through this first slot again. Pull out the slot. Maintaining that tension. And I'm going to wrap it again across these two middle ones. And I'm going to go back down through this slot. And remember, up under right here, the accent goes under the main weaving strand. Right? And just kind of pull it a little tight. Push, push up, push up. Now, as we're holding this, we'll take weaving strand on the side, wrap it around the top. I go over the first one, under the two middle ones, and over the last core strand. Pull out your slide. And you see how I've always got one hand holding it, kind of maintaining this little bit of tension. Now, it's not going to be perfect. It's going to come loose, but just kind of keep, be mindful of it. Now, this one. We're going to wrap it around and we're going to come up through this one little slot right here. Wrap it around the back side. Go underneath that first one. Pulling it, pulling it through. Crossing over the two middles. Go down through this lane. 
and under the last one. Right? Creating the X. The X is there. Right? Now, kind of push it all up. Pull this one. Be mindful of this wrap around when it tightens up that it's even with the other ones. Switching hands, maintaining all that, you know, just kind of holding it in place. I'm pulling this one, mindful of that wrap around. Pulling it. Pushing it up again. Now, again, we're going to take this one. We're going to tighten it up. Maintaining that tension and wrapping it around. All right, coming up through the thing, up through that first slot on that side. I'm going to cross those two middle strands and going down. Underneath, and like I said, I always maintain this. Accent color goes underneath here, All right? Pushing it up. Pulling it again, make sure it stays tight, make sure everything's tight. Tighten it up all up before we go to the next X. Right? And that's all there is to it, folks. Like I said, this one, and this one, I'll go ahead and let you know. You probably can't, yeah, you can a little bit right there. If you look right here, you can see the holes in there where you can see through the bracelet. It's just the nature of the way this one is because this accent piece is not allowing all the main weaving strands, the midnight blue, to seat all up next to each other. But as you do this and you push this thing up, it'll fill in those, it'll tighten up a little bit. But then when we come back and we do the stitching, it'll draw it all not, draw it all together. But if you don't do the stitching, you're going to have those holes, which there's nothing wrong with it. That's just the way this bracelet is. But just be mindful. It will have those little air holes in there. Okay, now, I'm going to do this again. I'm going to just do this and let you let you watch. Now, I'm going to back out a little bit so you can see. Now, I'm going to just do this. This is the way I usually do these videos. I've showed you how to do it. I've done about four or five repetitions. Back it up and watch it. Um, but now I'm going to just show you me doing it. You can see how I do it. You can, you know, maybe, maybe it's beneficial, maybe it's not, you know, but you can see how I do this. Let go of it, do it. Oh, I'll say this too. I probably should have said this in the beginning. If you've done a drill by, you, 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 be aware that when you wrap these things, this, these two cords, the main weaving cords around, that you don't get any twists in them. Because if you get a twist in this cord or whatever, it's going to be noticeable. And we don't want that. So, you know, always mindful of the twist, mindful of the twist. Not only when you're stitching, even when you're doing, you know, your bracelet. Hmm. Okay. Loosen it up, pulling everything a little tight, maintaining the tension and wrapping it around the back, coming up through that slot, pulling it through and going across the tube. Trying to maintain the tension best you can. I mean, I know it's we don't have enough fingers, we don't have enough hands, but we do the best we can. Okay, now push it up, push it up, over, under two, over the last one, under one, over the two, creating the X, and through the one. All right, push it up. Pull that one, pull that one, now, wait, pull here, this direction, maintain that tension as we wrap it around, we come back up through there, and I'm holding my finger on the back side of that accent cord, so that tension that I've created in this one, it'll stay there, 
Okay. Now, like I say, as soon as you take the finger off of it, it's going to want to come undone. But we're doing the best we can. See how it just come undone? That's just the way this thing is. You just got to be mindful of it. You're constantly having to push up and make sure everything stays kind of tight with this one. But I'll say this, when you go to wrap this one around underneath, pull it, pull it, then wrap it and hold that tension. What that does is it tightens it up over here on this side, basically. All right. And that's it, folks. Now I'm going to weave this one out to the end. And I'll come back when I get down to the end. And I'll show you how I finish it off, and uh, I'll show you how I did the stitching. But with that, happy weaving, and I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, folks, I'm back. I got it weaved out to the end. Um, as you can see, I, I've got my fids put on here. You know, I, I usually, when I get close to the end, I'll go ahead and put my fids on that way. You know, I can go ahead and finish it out. Um... Let's see. Oh, I, I'm going to show you. Just you notice the sides of them. It's pretty much straight. Now, I, like I've said in some of my past videos, when you're doing it, you can take it and kind of angle it up and look down at it from this side right here, and you can see, you know. Now, this one's it's not perfect. It's not perfect. You know, I, I, I can't ever get them perfect, but you try to get them as even as you as you can. And that's what all that, me holding it and pulling it and all that. That's that's the issue I see. That I know I had when I first started with these trill bites. Fishtails also, because of these wrapper rails on the edge. Trying to get them all even. Um, okay, now, with that said, let's see. I, I'm going to finish this out. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do this one yet. Um, I, I'll say this. I know, I, I speak from my own personal experience. I know that when I would go to make a bracelet, I'd want to see how they started it, you know, the, you know, how they did the actual weave. And then my question was always, how do they finish it? How do they finish it? And that was always the part. Now, I, and I know from just experience of doing this that sometimes the way I finished the bracelet, it wouldn't be, or I wouldn't have enough room to finish mine the way they finished theirs in the video, right? And it was kind of intimidating for me because I had to sit and figure out, okay, how am I going to do this? And you, you always want to try to maintain the, the, the way the weave looks. You want to finish it off so it kind of maintains that same same look. You see what I'm saying? You don't want all the weave to be consistent. And then down here at the bottom where you went to finish it, it just doesn't fit. The the method you've used to weave or what that it doesn't fit the rest of it, right? And that was always intimidating to me. Because sometimes, like I say, sometimes it, it would, I would finish and I wouldn't have enough room left to make it look or whatever. And... I wouldn't always finish it the way they did in these tutorials I would watch. But from just practice and experience, it just builds confidence. You start figuring out how to do it. You know, when I try a new bracelet, I don't normally, unless it's something crazy, unorthodox, something or another, I normally don't even care how they finish it. I just come up with my own way to do it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'll show you what I'm going to do. Like I say, I'm going to have to figure this out. I'm not even sure how I'm going to do it yet. Um, but you watch it, maybe it'll help, you can do this method, or just don't be scared. When you get down to the end, you know, have you enough slack to work with, enough excess to work with, and you can go from there. Now you can see, like I said, I started off, I started off with 14 feet of the midnight blue, which is the main wave, and I had four and a half feet, or four feet six inches of this accent, and I've got uh, roughly 10 inches yeah, about 10 inches left of, of each. 
and on this side. You know, you know what I'm saying? So I was, that was a good measure. That was a good measure. I would rather have, you know, enough that I'll be able to do the end and get my fids in there and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to just leave those measurements as they walk hard. Okay, now let's see. How am I going to finish this off? Let me look at this thing and see. For those who know me, I, I like to, like I said, I like to maintain the, the weed, the pattern of the weed best you can. Sometimes you can't do it at the end, but you try to maintain it the best you can. But I will have my cords. See how this one right here, if we look, this one right here is coming out the top of the bracelet. Yeah, we don't want that. We're going to somehow, some way, we're going to end up putting it around the back. And all three of these cords are going to get in, back woven into the back side of the bracelet. That way when we cut and burn it, we're not going to see it on the top or on the side. We don't want that. That's the, that's the, to me, that's the most important factor. Not seeing the cut and burn. Having it on the back side or the non-display side. Now, maintaining the consistent pattern of the weave, that's a close second. Does that make sense? But so let's see how we're going to do this. I think I got enough room. And I, when I do this, I throw that, here's your tip. Tip. Um, if you use a jig, I would, I would recommend, if you want these things to, to look their best, invest in a jig. You can get one. Walmart, Hobby Lobby, Craft Store. There's a few places online you can order them. Amazon. Um, I'm not going to make any recommendations because it just depends on your style of weaving and what you're going to do it for and all that kind of stuff. Because I've, I've bought a few that I would not. Mm -mm. But anyway, I'm, I, as you can see, I made my own. It fits my purposes. But let's see. How are we going to do this? Can I get one more accent in there? Oh, uh, this is what I was going to say about the jig. I leave the bracelet on the, when I'm trying to do this end part, I'll leave it on the, I'll leave it on the jig. That way the jig's kind of holding it there when I'm trying to run these fids through it. All right? So let me see. How am I going to do this? Can I wrap that accent piece maybe one more time around there? Or is it going to be too tight? Yeah. No, nah, let's leave that accent where it is right now. Let's not try to wrap it one more time. I mean, there's a little bit of room. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see this. Because you don't want the end of it. I, I'll, let me th put it this way. Explain it this way. If I tried to wrap this around there one more time and then do one more pass with the, the main weave, it's going to cause the end of this to be so tight that when you go to stitch it, it's not going. It's not going to be very easy, and we all know from doing this. We all know that the top of the bracelet and the very bottom of the bracelet never never works right. It's it's the meat of the bracelet. That's that's what everybody sees. You're not going to see that because it's going to be backside of your wrist where the buckle is. But if you try to put too much in here and you don't have enough room left on those core strands, it can make finishing the thing off a little difficult right so i'm not going to do that i'm going to just leave this one like it is now these let's see how am i going to do this let's see if i wrap it Yeah, this is what I'm going to do. Okay, this is this is kind of the way here. Let me zoom in. I'll, I, I said I was going to do that in a second. Let me zoom in. I'll, hopefully, you'll be able to see this. I'm going to zoom in kind of close. and Maybe you can see this. If you look, you can see the core strands right here on this side. Right, that one. And there's a little bit. Here, let me turn this light on. Maybe this will help a little bit. Maybe. Let's say bad lighting. I apologize, but you can see the core strand here. We want to at least cover up those core strands. So this is a method I do on a lot of my trilobites. I'm gonna to try to get both these cords to come out in the same spot. 
but we want to have these these wraps. So this last little part is not going to be the way I've woven the rest of the bracelet. It's going to be slightly different. And this is kind of the way I'll do this. Let's see. I'm going to leave this one because it's already coming out on the back. I'm going to leave it the way it is. Now this one right here, I'm going to just wrap it around and go all the way across the back side. And then come up. And wrap it, or wrap it around this core string. That way I get the two wraparounds on either end. Now granted, there's a little bit of a gap right there on in between there. Bigger than you'd want. But when I come back, because I'm, I know I'm going to stitch this, it's going to pull all them gaps together. And hopefully it's going <laughs> to it's going to compensate for that right there. But you see, see how I did that? I'm gonna just this was coming out the top, and I'm gonna just wrap it around. It's gonna cause a wrap around on that side and go all the way around the back side. Now normally I'll throw this out there. When I do this, these these strands right here have them going up out of the way and then wrap. You see what I'm saying? You don't want them to be down here and wrap because you're just gonna have to pull them back up there anyway. So go ahead and get them up there and out of the way. I just bring this one all the way around. And I'm gonna when I when I go through right here, I'm gonna go through at an angle so it, it stays the fid is a on this side, not like this. It's gonna be on this side. That way it's close to the top bubble because I'm trying to get everything up that direction. To weave it back up under the brace. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. All right, I see this is just me and the way I'm doing it. And, you know, as you do these more and more, you'll get more confident at this. And you'll just have to, it's kind of like a on the fly, trial by fire. You just kind of get down to the end and you look at it and you just kind of figure it out. So I'm going to just stick it through there. There is a bit of a gap on that side. It'd be all right though. And that's it. All right now we got all three of them. And we're going to take off the jig. And we're going to deal with it. Now, let's see. This one's not, I didn't tighten this jig up as much as I have done in the past, but I'll, I'll throw this out there. I do this in all the videos because I put so much tension on this. Let's just see. Watch this piece. This piece right here probably, it'll, it'll move. And you'll hear it. See, I didn't have as much tension as I normally do. Okay, but get the jig out of the way. And now we're just going to do the back part. Let's see. Now I'll look. You can always do this. Look at what you've done on your other bracelets as examples. Okay, let's see. I'm going to try to zoom in and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. I already see how I'm going to do this. Okay, see how this, this accent piece is on that side. Hang on. This piece right here, running across. See how the accent piece is on that side of it. What I'm going to do is take these two main weaving strands and run up under that piece. That way they're, they'll all three right, be right there in the same place. Does that make sense? Because that's just me and the way I want it. I try my best to get all, you know, two, three, four, seven, ten, however many weaving strands you got all together. Try to get them all into one, one little spot. Does that make sense? That way when you do your cut and burn, they all meld together. And like I've said here, let me back out so you can see how I'm going to do this. And like I've said in my videos, take your, your feed, your lacing needle or whatever. Don't try to dig it up under there. Just bend that buckle out of the way. That way you can get a straight running shot up under it. Well, let's see. Yeah. We'll just go up under it. That's all I'm going to do. Alright. See how now those two are right next to each other? I'm going to just do the other one the same way. Let 
mindful, my, oh, sorry, out of frame, I apologize, mindful of your twist, you, 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 you tend to want to twist, just be mindful of your twist, because sometimes this is very tight, and if you get a twist in this, in this little loop, and you go to pull it tight, that twist is going to get you, it's going to throw you off, so you want to be mindful and try to get that twist out, here we go, all right, Lay it on there. Okay. Now, like I've said in most of my videos, most of my videos, just, if you know you're going to stitch your bracelet, do not cut and burn the final spot. Why? Because that big lump of hard plastic may prevent you from getting your lacing needle, your stitching needle through that bracelet. You may need to go through right through where that big lump is, right, of hard plastic. And you can't do it. So, you always leave inch two, yeah, you know, more than an inch, you know, about two inches, two and a half inches. That way, that way, you don't have the hard lump of plastic, but when you, you start manipulating that bracelet, moving it around and stitching and all that, you got enough leeway on these cords that they're not going to go back up under there and it start coming unwolded. I mean, you have to fight with that to get it back up under there. Should, does that make sense? That's why you do that. That's why That's why you do that. So I'm going to cut all three of these. And plus, you don't want to leave, you don't want to leave all this on there dangling when you go to stitch because this is just going to get tangled up in your stitching. So we're going to leave that away. Now I'm going to burn all these. I'm going to just burn them like they are. Normally, you know, if I was going to be using the cord, I'd burn it and kind of smooth it up. not going to do that because these are eventually just going to get cut off. Right? So we're just going to burn them where they are. Just so they won't fray and all that. That's hot. My knuckle touched it. That's hot. <laughs> Ooh, it happens. It happens. Okay, now these places right here, we'll go ahead and take these off. Yeah, these are my new fids I got just the other day. I've used them. I, I've used them. I've got them the other day. If, if you watch my What's in the Box video, my newest one I just put on, that was the last video I put on the page, or on the channel. Check out that playlist. I don't have it linked in the description below. It's only got two videos, but it's just me opening the packages of cordage and buckles and stuff like that. Me talking about them, or whatever. Yeah, I ain't none of that worth even saving. But you see how much I got left. What is that? About eight inches. Yeah, about eight inches a piece. Which ain't really enough to say. I'm not even going to worry about saving those. Okay, now. I've got my... Now, like I said in the beginning, let's back out. And I'll, I'll say this. Like I said in the beginning, you know, the measurements I had were for a smaller wrist. And I knew this one was going to be for a bigger wrist. So I sized up the length of my cord. Right? And I just, you know, educated guess. And I said I started with five, uh, 14 feet and then four and a half feet. And you saw what I had left. So I called that one pretty good. So I'm going to leave those numbers the same. Now, with this one, I said earlier in the video on the micro cord that I was going to use a four foot piece. I've already got this set up, ready to go. And I'll say this, like I always say, when you put it in there, you want it in there so it doesn't come out. Right? The reason is, sometimes you, you'll let that thing dangle to get the twists out, and you don't want it to fall off. But uh, I said I was going to use a four-foot piece. Well, I added, you know, to this, so I went ahead and I added a little more to this. Maybe I'm going to have way more than I need, maybe not. But I'd rather have more than I need than not enough to finish. So I added six inches. So what I've got here is a four foot 
six inch piece of micro cord. And this is Colonial Blue. Here, um, it's right here. Colonial Blue, which is a good color. Um, it kind of, I've got Baby Blue, which is what this accent color is. I've got the Baby Blue, but Baby Blue is just too light for me. And the customer doesn't want that. So I'm going to just use this Colonial Blue, which is going to be nice. I've used these, this color combination on quite a few bracelets, and it looks really good. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, now let's show you. This stitching right here, I, I, I did this one of my very first videos I put on this YouTube channel. was me doing like a stitch trilobite type thing or something. And I showed you how to do it there. It's not hard. You just have to be mindful. What's, what's going on right there? I just didn't get pulled tight. See how it kind of... There's a little gap right there. I just... That's that contention consistency I, I, I'm always talking about. See so there's a little gap. See how this one right here seems like it sticks out a little bit more? It's just tension consistency. It just didn't get pulled tight. Pulled, or I ain't going to say pulled tight. You just get, didn't get pulled the same amount as the rest of them. But the front side of it looks pretty good. But I've done this, this stitching before. It's not, it's not hard. You just have to be mindful of your, just how you do it. There's, I've, I've found a way that makes it easier for me. Um, but let's see. Okay, I'm gonna do this side first. Like I say, we're going to, it's gonna be two separate pieces of stitching. Here, let me, let me get the uh, visual aid back out. Like I say, this gold on the one side, that's one big long piece. This gold on this side is a separate piece that runs down. Right? So you got two pieces of microphone. The way I do this anyway, and I know, and I, I said this in one of my other videos, some people, when they do this this kind of style of stitching, they'll do it, and it'll also be on the back side. And I, I don't do it that way. I, I don't see why you would want the stitching on the side that's going to be against your skin. Now, granted, when you put it up there and you're going to take a picture of it, and you can see right inside there, yeah, it looks great. But in practicality, when you're wearing it, you're not going to see that side. So, I, I mean, that's just the way they do it. And I, I don't do it that way. Seems to me like it'd be, use more cord and nobody's going to see it. And so I don't do it that way. I, I only do the front side of it, okay? Now I'm going to show you how I do this. This is the way I'm going to do this. Okay, look, I'll show you this. Remember how I told you? We've, this piece has already been anchored. You see how it's running up under these two pieces? That's why I did that funny wrap around in the beginning, right? Now, because we have this here, we're going to anchor our micro cord in the same spot. But let's see, which side? I'm going to do this side first, this side over here first. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run on this side. Here, let me zoom in so you can see this. I'm going to run up under. Just going right next to this accent cord up under those two pieces. And that way when we go to cut and burn all this, the all this and the two pieces of micro cord are gonna be right there together. And again, they'll when you cut and burn them, they'll all meld together into one big piece of plastic. But we're gonna go up under those two cords. I just push it through. Pushing that down with your thumb sort of cause some resistance so you don't pull it all the way through and have to do it again. Okay, now, what I'm going to do
Okay, let's see if I can show you this on camera. Does it, it doesn't really matter. I don't ever try to go this. Hopefully we can get this on camera. This top piece right up here, I don't ever try to go around this, these two top pieces. I always drop down because we know the top part of the brace is never going to be right. So we get down here where the, the actual weaving and the meat and the consistent pattern is. And that's where we're going to start. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to come out right in this area right here. I'll get it through there and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here, let me look at this other one. How do I do this other one? Okay, yeah, that's what I'll do. I'm going to stick it through on this back side. Basically, right here with this accent piece is coming through. That's what I'm going to come through. I'm going to come through right there. Okay, so we're just going to stick it through. There's a hole right there. You can see through it. You can see there's a there's a hole right there. That's where I'm gonna go through. Just stick it through there. And if you look, it's coming. This piece of midnight blue that's going across right there is above that, above it toward the buckle. As always, when we're stitching, that piece that we got anchored, hold it with your thumb. That way you don't. Snatch, you don't snatch it, then have to redo this. Okay, we got it through there. Now we're gonna flip it over, find the end of our needle. Okay, now I'm I'm right handed, and this this is kind of awkward, but the way I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna flip this bracelet around this way. Okay. Now this pattern is an over two and under one. That's the way I do it. Now you can do it however you, you want, but I'm going to do it over two and under one, right? But to get it started, I'm going to go over just one. I'm going to go over this first one right here. So it's coming out here. We're going to go, when I say, I'm talking about these wraparounds on the side. We're going to go. The normal pattern is over two of them and then underneath one and then over two and under one. Does that make sense? So like if you're looking at the side of the bracelet, it's going to go over two, under one, over two, under one, over two, under one. And you're just going to work your way down, right? That's all, that's all this is. And it's the same way on the other side, right? But. In the case of this first one, I'm going to just go over one and then back under that same one. Right? So, I'm going to run this out. Attempting to get the twists out. Okay, so like I said, we're going to go. We're coming out right here. And we're going to go over this one. And we're going to go back up under it this way. And as always, when you go to do stitching, get. I have your workspace clean so you, all your micro cord, I'm sorry, so all your micro cord doesn't get wrapped around everything on a desk and knock over your coffee cup or, you know, your juice glass or your sippy cup or whatever you have. <laughs> okay, see, it? we'll just pull it through. Holding this piece back here. Remember, we want to hold that. What I'm going to do, like I said, when we go to stitch this, it's going to tighten up some of these gaps in here. There's not that many gaps. I pulled, I pushed it pretty tight. See, so we got a, a twist in it. Mindful of a twist. Always be mindful of twists. Now, I'm going to pull it this direction. And what that's going to do, just see how there's like a little groove running right here? We want this... The stitching is going to be on this wraparound, but we want it to be down into that groove. Does that make sense? So I'm going to pull it this way, and it's going to cause it to sit right there the way. And I'll hold this thing with my finger, and I'll pull. I'll hold this down toward the table, and I'll pull this to tighten it up. All right? Now, if you look, I'll show you this. 
on, on this bracelet right here. If we look at this, you see how all these pieces, I started stitching up here and they all got an angle on them. See how they're, the ones on this side, they're all angled this direction. So it goes over two, back under one and it comes out. See how when it goes into the bracelet, it's closest to the center. When it goes under this one and it comes back out, it's toward the edge. That's what gives it that angle. And that's what you got to be mindful of when you do this. Okay? So you just got to be mindful of it. So we're going to take it. Get that out of the way. And you do this, you'll see, you'll see how I'm doing it. Over two, under one, over two, under one. That's all there is. But as you do it, you'll figure out where you, how to do it. But this is the way I do it. Okay? So where we're at, here, we're gonna, I gotta turn it back around because I am right handed. I'm gonna turn it around this way. So I'm gonna go over these, over this, this is the one I've, I'm coming out right here. So I'm gonna go over one, over two. And then right here in this gap between these two wrapper rails, I'm going to go up under that one, back that way. Okay? And I found it easiest. This is the way I do it. You don't have to do it this way, but this is the way I do it. I found it easiest if you take that stitching needle and you lay it right there where that groove is and kind of pop it down in that groove and kind of twist it just a little bit and get it up under it. And just push it through. All right. Now, I'm going to spin it around. This is the way I do it. I'm going to spin it around and pull it. Mindful of the twists. Now, what I'm going to do, this is the way I do this. And this, this tends to get it to follow into that groove right there. Take this piece. Kind of hold it up here like this. And take this one and pull it this way. That way, it's forcing it down into that groove. Does that make sense? And when you get it right there to the end, just kind of hold it and pull it. And what it's going to do, it's going to, those two wraparounds, it's going to draw them together. Now you're going to have a big gap in the, in the next one. And I'm going to spin it back. So it's pulled these two wraparounds together and it's created a gap right here. But when we go over one, over two, and we do it again, it's going to draw that gap together. And the, the gap is basically going to move all the way down that bracelet every time you stitch it. <coughs> Make sense? So again, we're going to go. We're coming out right here in this groove, and we're going to go over this wraparound. That's one. Over the next wraparound. That's two. And we're going to go in this groove. Kind of angle it in there. And you see how I've got it angled, and it's coming out the side of the brake. That just, it, it seems to go through there a little bit easier, and you don't, you're not poking any of your cords or anything. And you push it through, and like I said, I'll spin it around. It's probably a better way to do this, but this is the way I do it, because I want this thing to sit tight. Mindful of the twist when you get there to the end. And like I said, take this this side right here. See? Kind of hold it up here. Just kind of put the thumb on it a little bit. You know, you're not holding it tight, just causing a little resistance. That way when you go to when you go to pull this side. When you go to pull this one, it's going to cause it to sink down in that crack or down in that little groove. And then when it gets to the end, you just kind of hold it and pull. See, that's all there is to it. She has good twists in it. What I'll do is I'll reach back up here and just run my hand to the end. Hmm. 
And that's why I said you want that needle to stay on there. But that's it. I mean, that's that's really all it is. Go. It's coming out in this groove. So we go over root one, over two, and in there. And we just kind of. Pull it through. Mindful of the twist. Alright. And just kind of pull it back that direction. When it gets to the end, just kind of pull it. Spin it around. And I'm going to get these twists out of my cord. Hang on. Right, but that's all there is to that. I mean, that, it's it's not hard. It just it just takes a little time, and you just gotta be mindful. Don't poke your cord, you know. Don't don't poke your cord. Just be careful. Just reach up here and do it. I'm gonna back out. And I'm gonna do this a few times and just let you let let you see how I do this. I've showed you I've showed you the patterns over two under one over two under one. Over two, under one. And you work your way all the way down to the end. When you get to the end, you just run it through the bracelet out the back and run it back up under that same piece where we did these. And the other side is the same way, but it's done just a little bit different because the angle is different on it. This side over here, they're all angled this way, but the ones on this side, they're going to be angled the other way. So just be mindful of that when you go to do it. All right? Now I'm going to do this a, a few passes and just let you see me do it. Popping it down in between there. And that that gap it's created when you drive is where you're going to come out at. It makes it a little easier. It just... Mindful of the twist. See how you got a big big twist going on right there? It doesn't want to go through. Just kind of take your fingers on this side and twist it as you pull it. And it'll straighten itself out. But just be mindful when you get down to the close to the end. It's, it doesn't have any twist. Ooh, there's a snag in the cord right there. Where'd that come from? We'll see. See how I'm pulling it that direction is causing it to sit down in that little groove like we want. Pull it tight, flip it around. Over two. Under one. Pull it. Over two, under one. See how I dropped that needle off the back? It was all twisted up. My microphone was all twisted up. I just kind of dropped it and ran my finger out like that. And it's getting the twists out. And you come back in one motion. I just come back. Oop. I just come back with it in my hand. Over two, under one. Over two, under one. I love your twists. Once you do this, you'll get confident. And it's not. You'll get confident. In the, but don't worry about doing it fast at first. Just make sure you're getting it in the right place. And kind of work your technique of how you're doing your hands. And You know, it's different for everybody. What works for you may not work. What works for me may not work for you. I know some people... I've talked to a lot of people that do this and 
say how I drop that needle and I grab it right here and I just kind of stretch it out. And I'm getting the twists out of that cord. But I've talked to a lot of people doing this and, and you know, people have certain issues, health issues, I guess you'll say, medical issues with their hands and they don't have the dexterity and they can't, and I, hey, everybody's different. That's why I say what I do may not work for you, but I'm just showing you how I do it. Maybe it'll be useful to you. But don't worry about trying to be fast at it at first. The speed will come. That's why I tell people all the time, practice, 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 try Try it. Just sit down and do it. If it doesn't look right, don't worry about it. But learn the mechanics over two under one. And then start doing it. And as you do it, the technique will come. And that's when you will gain the speed. And you'll gain speed, you'll gain confidence, all that. It's... But see, that's, that's how I do that. But I'll finish this out and I'll come back. Um, I'll come back. How about this? I'm going to finish this whole thing out. I'm going to do this side and I'm going to do this other side. The other side, I'll, I'll go ahead and show you. The other side is the same way. Just when you go to anchor this piece over here because you're going to be doing this side, run it up on this side. Up under the same spot, you know what I'm saying? But just do it on this side. And you're going to go through basically in the same spot. You will come out right in this area right in here. And just a lot of times that first one, I'll go over one and under one on the first one. And then I'll start the pattern. Over two, under one. Over two, under one. But you see, that's all there is to it. But I'm going to go ahead and run this one out. And then I'll run the second one out. And once I get down to the end... I'll show you how I finish it all off. And we'll throw it on the size of mandrel to do a test, a test sizing. Like I said, if it was for my wrist, I'd do it on camera for me, but we're going to throw it on the, on the sizing mandrel I have. But, uh, I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to run this out and we'll have this finished product here in a minute. Okay, folks, I'm back. I got it stitched out, as you can see. I'll go ahead and tell you, I am, I'm almost done. You see, right here. For those of you who don't know, these are one inch squares. I've got a little, about right at a foot left. Okay. Now, let me say this. That first piece I cut, that I did this side with, I cut a piece that was four foot and six inches. And I had almost two feet left over. Right? So I took that into consideration. I cut this piece a little shorter. But I still have some left. So, um, I would say, like I said, this bracelet was seven and a three quarter inch wrist measurement. So, I'd say about a three foot piece would probably be enough. So that's probably what I'm going to put in the description below, three feet. But with that said, we'll finish this out. I'm going to go ahead and finish this out. I figure I'll come back right before I do these last couple ones just to show you how I do it. Because I mean, it's the same thing, but it's it's slightly different because it's on the other side. And you're, we're trying to maintain those angles, right? Okay, so I'm going to just zoom in, show you this, and we'll do the cut and burns, and I'll we'll show you the finished product. So weird. We can see. See how it's got the angles, right? These are this way, and the ones on the other side are the other way. So when you do it on this side, do it the same way, but you hold the. I, me, being right handed, and I hold the needle in my right hand and the bracelet in my left hand, I hold it like this. And like I showed you on the other side, I'll just kind of put it between the groove. Here, we'll show you. You're going to go over this one, and over this one, and then under it, right? So we'll get it in that groove. And 
and just get it up under there. Now on this one, you got you know, what you'll have to do to to get that angle right. You're gonna have to have this piece up here like this, and you're gonna go over the top of it. See how my needle is going over the top of that? Make sure you don't get it wrapped around the end where the buckle is. Uh oh, I got a twist in there. Let me fix this. Hang on. No, I got a call. Hang on. I got a call around here. Give me a second. <laughs> Mistakes and all. I film everything. I can fix it. I got it. It's, it's wrapped around. You can see it's wrapped around right there. Get that out of there. So that's why I cut these as short as I can so stuff like this don't happen. But it's inevitably, it's going to happen. You do it enough, it's going to happen. Okay, so we're going to pull this through, get it off of that. I'll turn it like this. When I go to do this one, kind of pull it back this way. Sort of go down in that groove a little bit better. Just kind of hold it like I did the last one. I'll hold it, then I'll pull it. When we look, if you look, if you can see this, hopefully you'll be able to see this. It's not going to want to focus. We see how this piece right here is coming out. I'm going to take this needle and push that down just a little bit. So I can't get it to sit in there right. Yeah, that'll work. No. See, this right here is what I'm talking about. I apologize. The thing won't stay in focus. It just will not focus. Don't ask me why this camera is like that. Probably because it's a cheap camera. Look at that. See, now it's in focus. Why does it, why won't it focus? Ugh. It's frustrating, folks, but I apologize. Like I said, I'm not a filmmaker and I do not have the best equipment. But I know how to make a bracelet for the most part. Going above it, the needle is above this piece right here. Mindful of your twist. I'm pulling it. Okay, this is going to be, yeah, this is the last one I'm going to do. I'm going to go up under it. I'm wrapped around down here. Let's pull out the slide. Okay, now let's do it. Okay, that's it. That's the last one. Now, all we're going to do here on the end is we're just going to run it through. You see how I ran it through here? You can't quite see it, but then I run it. I ran it up under this one blue piece going across. Okay, let me see. Will this help? Where the rest of them, the big, the 550 cords were going, it all goes up under that same midnight blue piece that's running in this direction, right? And that's all we're going to do to this one. We're just going to run it down from where it's coming out. I'm going to just run it down right through here. Now, like I was saying at the, toward the end of the other one, when you finish one of these, it's not an exact science. Don't be intimidated. You don't have to do it the exact same way. I know that was my issue when I wanted what was trying to learn how to do this. I, I I was trying to do it exactly like they were in a video, but sometimes it can't be done that way. Just the nature. You do it the best you can 
to get it to maintain. Let's see, is that going to be right? Yeah, see, that didn't do right. Okay, that's not going to look right, so let me fix that. Hang on, let me run it back through there. I'm going to go through down one more. Yeah, there we go. That's what I want. Oh, I got it down there. I'll pull it. I'll pull it tight. Maybe I can get that to look right. Maybe not. Yeah, that don't look right. Get it. Yeah, if I pull it tight, it'll look right. Yeah, it looks right now. Okay, now all we're going to do is we're going to run this, run our needle back up this direction underneath that one last, that piece. Right here in the same area where this blue, this other piece of micro cord is. We're just going to run it right up under there. That's the first time, first time I've used this new stitching needle. I like it. It's a lot, it's a lot, the diameter is smaller than the other one that I had. And the, the ones that I were, I was using for the 550, the Type 3, the brass ones, they're also new. And they're, the, the diameter of them is also smaller. So it's easier to get it up under there. You're not having to make such a big hole to get it through. I like these. These are good. Pericord EU. That's where I got these. These are the ones with the blunted tip. This is a type 1, and the other ones were a type 3. Okay. We'll put that in a little storage case. Put this in a, in a scrap bucket. Okay, now we're going to do the cut and burns. Okay. And make sure we got everything that looks right on the front. Before you do your cutting burns, always look at the front and make sure everything looks right in case you need to tighten something up. Here, we're going to pull these tight, make sure we got them tight. Make sure everything looks right. Because once you cut and burn, yeah, it's kind of hard to work with. That'll work. And we're going to take these. I'm going to take these two micro cords and I'm going to try to get them. And this one, I'm going to leave myself a little bit more room than I normally would. That way there'll be, there'll be some cord there that will actually be able to melt. And all these, these three pieces hopefully can melt all into one big lump. Like I always say, once you cut these things, don't start manhandling it because you don't want it to slide back up under there. You want to be easy with it. I'm just holding it up here to the camera so you can see it. So there's a little bit more than you... Then I would normally leave out, but I want I want there to be enough there that I can that it'll melt and they'll all meld together into one lump. Okay, before you do it, whatever you use to smooth it out, go ahead and get it out. Have it at the ready because this is a time sensitive thing. So we're we'll gonna hold this up at an angle. We're we'll gonna try to get all these to melt together. Yeah, pretty good. All right. Now we're gonna do this last piece down here at the bottom, and we're gonna be we're gonna call this one finished. 
Okay, same thing. Before you do it, make sure the bottom of it looks looks good. Make sure everything's tight because things want to the wraparounds, I kind of want to come loose. You know, you've been flipping and flopping it while you're doing the stitching and your main weaving cords, that midnight blue, it'll have a tendency to want to kind of loosen up on you. You want to make sure everything's still tight. Make sure everything's still tight. Come back here. I always come back here and kind of pull them. And if you need be, grab, grab your pliers or whatever. Give it a good pull. But everything seems to be still tight, so I don't think I'm going to need to use the pliers on them. Now you got them all there. I'm going to try to get them as close together as I can. That way when I go to, just just like I did the other one, you go to melt them, then all, the ends of them will all melt into one big piece. Because one big piece of plastic is definitely not going to get, go back through there. Over time, wearing it and getting handled, you don't want it to come unwoven. That should be good. We're going to cut this. Oh yeah, that'll work right there. The way I'm going to do this, because I'm going to try not to get on these edges of the trilobite, so I'm going to kind of angle it. Bend that buckle back just a little bit, and I'm going to come at it at this angle right here. So the heat will be up here where there's nothing at. That, that's my intent anyway. Give it a second to cool off, and like always, like always, run your finger over it. Make sure, make sure it's smooth. You don't want any little hard tips, burrs that are going to be on that back side of the bracelet where your where your skin is, right? So you want it to be smooth. That right there, I might need to hit right there with that flame. Just soften it up a little bit. Try to smooth that out just a little bit better. Oh yeah, that'll work. All these little pieces right here, not long enough to do anything with, they're going to straight in the trash can. Get everything out of the way. Put our scissors back where they go. Now we're going to back out. We're going to see what it looks like. Looks pretty good, right? Now, here's the test. I mentioned this in a couple of my videos. A friend of mine told me about this. And it's a solid piece of wood. I mean, that's solid. It's a, it's used for adjusting like metal bracelets. You can put them on here and pound them down and it'll stretch a metal bracelet out, right? It's a sizing mandrel type thing. Well, I bought it, and I've obviously measured it and put, you know, 6-inch, 7-inch, 8-inch, right? And once you size a bracelet for somebody that that's not there, you can put it on here. And, you know, you can do your own bracelets or whatever and put them on here, and you can see, you know, put them on your wrist or whatever. But this is a confidence builder. Plus, once you get it sized and you put it on here, you can take a picture of it for the customer so they can see that the bracelet you have made for them is to the size that they've given you. Makes sense. But, I always do this on camera. If it would have been for my arm, I would put it on my arm and show you. But, this was not for me. It's for someone else. So, we're going at a 7 and 3 quarter inch. So, we, we want it to go down to right in here in this area. So, what we'll do is we'll Bend it around, clasp it, and what I'll do is I'll just drop it on there, kind of round it out a little bit, and just drop it on there, see where it goes to, and then just kind of snug it down a little bit. Yep, that looks like a fit to me. 
there's a seven and it's covering up the H right here at the bottom. So that's a seven and three quarter inch wrist right there. I'll hold it up here for the camera, let you see it. Let's see. Here's what I started weaving. And there's the bottom of it. There's that brass buckle. But that thing looks good to me. I'll call that a finished job. But hopefully that helps, folks. Uh, like I said, the description, the specifications and measurements, they are in the description below. I always put them, the finished adjusted measurements and all that is in the description below. Check out the link for the playlist for the core strands. There's also a, a, a link for... It's a tips and tricks playlist, which I haven't put very many videos on those, but go watch those. Let's talk about some of the basic tools I use, you know, it's just some general, you know, paracording 101, if you will, if I could use that. I know somebody else has, uses that, but you, it, I mean, it makes sense. Just basic knowledge, tips and tricks, things like that. But, uh, I appreciate you watching. Give us a like, share it if you want. Um, subscribe, definitely subscribe. My Instagram link, Paracords of Kindness, it's, it's in the description below. But with that, I appreciate you watching. And remember, keep it neat, keep it clean, and keep it tight. Happy weaving, folks.